All right, hey guys, here we are. We finished getting all the details set up with our storage slash fire tank. So here in California, if you're building a house, you have to have one of these storage tanks because the fire department says you have to. So anyway, it holds about 2,500 gallons if it's all the way to the top, see the 2,500. Uh, right now we've got about 2,000 gallons in it. So we've been kind of slowly filling it with, uh, with our kind of treated water saw the pump house video you might want to go back and review that one but anyway we got our 2,000 gallons in here right now we're sort of adding about a hundred per day to not overwork the softener and all that equipment um, but basically the water comes from this pipe out of the pump house we'll go in there in a minute comes up through here and fills the tank we'll take a look inside in a second and then it draws water from the bottom so down here we've got uh, union shutoff valve and then it's all two inch it goes into the underground pipe down here and this is the valve for the fire department so I have to get one more little connection for them hooked on here but if they showed up they would hook up their truck they would open this valve and they'd be able to fill up their truck from this tank okay let's take a look in the top and I'll show you what's going on inside the tank okay so down there is where we were now if we look inside here, you can see what goes on. Basically water comes into this little pipe stub. So as it's filling, it's coming along out of this pipe and filling it up. Since we have a constant pressure uh, pump, the submersible down in the well, uh, we elected to use this float valve. It's basically like a big toilet valve. So once it gets full, it's about 2,500 gallons, this will sort of fill up and it'll shut off. And then you have this other thing here, this sump alarm. So right now it's in the down position, which will be telling us, uh-oh, you ran out of water. But when the tank fills, this will become about level, and then the alarm will shut off. So we'll know if it is getting empty, maybe something's wrong with the submersible, but we'll still have about 2,000 gallons left in order to have time to fix it. Okay, before I drop my phone in here, let's go in the pump house and show you what goes on in there. Okay, now we're inside the pump house. If you haven't seen the pump house video and you're wondering what all this awesomeness is, go watch that one. For now, we'll just talk about what's new. So you can see over here, we've got this valve is the D tank fill valve. It's closed right now because we already filled it for today. But if I opened it, then it goes along and it starts to fill the tank. This restricts it to five gallons per minute, which uh, we measured it, it's pretty accurate. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Um, that way we can kind of not have it use too much water as it's trying to fill. So that's the D tank fill valve that ultimately leads to that one inch PVC that goes to the top of the tank. The bottom two inch pipe comes underground right here. So it pops through the slab, another shutoff valve, goes into this one and a quarter inch flexible and into the booster pump. So this is a pretty cool, Unfortunately, also means pretty expensive. Two horsepower, constant pressure booster pump that will deliver up to, I think, 35 to 40 gallons per minute as required by the sprinkler system. So that's the other reason to have a storage tank is that that's quite a bit of water for the fire suppression sprinklers inside the house. So you have to have at least a 1.5 horsepower you know, with this two horsepower constant pressure. Let's hope it works out pretty good. Water comes out through this one inch flexible pipe and into our PEX line. Ultimately that goes underground down there where you can see that pressure gauge um, and goes through a bunch of two inch PVC underground all the way into the house. Okay, one more thing. The sump alarm was what was in that conduit that you saw connected to the tank that makes its way in here. And we will pause the video for a second and plug it in so you can see how that works. Okay, that was its chirp. First got powered on, and then it will decide there's something wrong. That's it. It's telling us the tank is low, which as we just saw inside there, it is low, so we want it to be alarming. Okay, we'll see what happens when it's full. Hopefully the float valve will turn off the water flow, and we just leave that valve open, and this thing will not be alarming. Anyway, we'll just assume it works. So that's it for this video. We'll see you next time.